where we review, discuss, and reimagine popular movie lists objectively. We're your hosts, I'm Jerry. And I'm Brad. And on this episode, we'll be exploring number 28 from AFI's 100 Years, 100 Passions, the 100 Greatest Love Stories of All Time. All right, number 28 is Shop Around the Corner, released in 1940, directed by Ernst Lubitsch, starring Margaret Sullivan and James Stewart. So, the synopsis for this romantic comedy is as follows. Alfred Kralik, played by Jimmy Stewart, is the top salesperson at a leather goods shop in Bucapest, owned by the high-strung Mr. Matushek. One morning, Kralik reveals to his co-worker, Pirovich, that he's been corresponding anonymously with an intelligent and cultured woman whose ad he came across in the paper. Kralik is Matushek's oldest and most trusted employee, but lately, tensions have surfaced between them. They get into an argument over Matushek's idea to sell a cigarette box that plays an annoying song when opened. After the exchange, Clara Novak, played by Margaret Sullivan, enters the shop looking for a job. Kralik tells her there are no openings. When she is able to sell one of the cigarette boxes, describing it as a candy box, Matushek hires her. However, she and Kralik do not get along. Matushek begins to suspect his wife is having an affair as she stays out late and requests money from him. As Christmas approaches, Kralik prepares to meet his pen pal for dinner. The meeting is stalled when Matushek demands everyone stay after work to decorate the store. Later, Kralik is called into Matushek's office and is fired. No one in the shop understands Matushek's actions are related to his suspicions Kralik is having an affair with his wife. Later, Matushek meets with a PI who informs him his wife is, in fact, having an affair with one of his employees, the womanizer, Vadas. The delivery boy, Pepe, returns to the shop just in time to, to prevent Matushek from committing suicide. Meanwhile, Kralik arrives at a cafe for his date, only to discover his pen pal is Novak. Despite his disappointment, he talks to her, pretending he's there to meet Pirovich. In his mind, Kralik tries to reconcile the cultured woman of his letters with his annoying co-worker, all the while secretly hoping that things might work out with her. Concerned that Kralik's presence will spoil her first meeting with her far superior pen pal, she calls Kralik a little insignificant clerk and asks him to leave. Later that night, Kralik visits Matushek in the hospital. Matushek offers him the job of manager. Grateful to Pepe for saving his life, he also promotes him to clerk. The next day, Novak calls in sick after her date failed to show. That night, Kralik visits her apartment. During the visit, she receives a letter from her pen pal and reads it in front of Kralik. Two weeks later on Christmas Eve, the shop achieves record sales. Kralik and Novak, alone in the shop, talk about their planned dates for the evening, and Novak reveals she had a crush on Kralik when they first met. After pre pretending to have met Novak's mystery man, he puts a red carnation in his lapel and reveals he is her pen pal, and they kiss. All right, cute movie. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so if you followed our holiday list, this movie showed up on there as well, and yes. we just kind of glossed over it because we knew we were going to be discussing it in greater detail as it was part of our main list that we're following here. Yeah, for sure. Um, still debatable on whether it's really a Christmas movie. You know... I've been thinking about it a little bit, and I'll allow it because okay. uh, there's a. It takes place almost exclusively during the winter. True. It's in a, it's in a retail shop. People are buying mm -hmm. Christmas presents. The main kind of reveal happens on Christmas Eve. True. Okay. They, they do okay. talk about Christmas okay. enough in the movie. It's not a pure Christmas movie. Yeah. But I mean, to be fair. You know, when we were doing the, the holiday list, it showed up on every single one yeah. of the, the lists that we used to I think it was, like, list. number four yeah, on it was, that I, list. It was because it up. showed up on every single list. And on at least one of those ten lists, it was number one. Yeah. So, yeah. it's a very well-regarded movie. This movie is very cute. I have to say, like, I have to give, like, James Stewart, like, the MVP of all time. Because he's in a lot of these movies. And he's great in every single one of them. Yeah. And it's not just that, dude. When you, like, hear about him as a person, uh -huh. dude, you're like, holy crap. Like, he was, like, you know, he went he went away to World War II and he oh. became a pilot. 
shit. And he fought, like, he was, like, good, too. Like, he flew again in the Korean War. And he he was, like, in his, like, 70s, he was doing flights in Vietnam. Wow. This dude was impressive. <laughs> yeah, wow. Like, yeah, the, he's great in this movie. I really like the atmosphere of the retail shop. It was very, like, uh kind of like friends the show friends a like where bit. everybody's kind of yeah. hanging out and everybody knows what's going on in each other's lives yeah. and... i mean anyone who's ever worked retail you kind of you develop these they're real thin friendships for the most part like for the most part you probably don't talk to the people that you worked retail with anymore at this point you know i i, I actually a couple of my, my friends are still people i met when you know i worked at the video store but mm -hmm. For the most part, most of those people have just kind of come and go in your lives. But while you're working there, you kind of have this weird camaraderie. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're both there working the same shit job, usually for the same shit boss for shit pay. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you just kind of, and you're, you know, you're, you're, you've got nothing else to do. You're usually a little bit younger, so you're a little bit more open to talking about your life with your co-workers yes, at that point yes. too. So. Like who you're dating, where you're going, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. And um, so that's cool. And then um, it had a really sad undertone with the with the owner, the store owner, and him finding out his wife's cheating on him. And it's it was, and he was about to commit suicide. Well, I mean, the reason that they use it is it's, you it it make it makes the whole thing about why there's so much tension between him and um Kralik, why why that tension exists is because you know the PI's kind of already asserted that his wife is having an affair with mm -hmm. one of his employees mm -hmm. and he immediately goes to you know which is I guess is kind of flattering is he immediately thinks that it's it's Jimmy Stewart's character yeah that you know that's the kind of guy that you know his wife would deem worthy enough to cheat on him with and it turns out it's this real shitty dude that real shitty dude that nobody can stand anyway yeah. yeah um it's a good movie it's really sweet um you know she's there totally having this like love affair through their written word but they're in and they but they've met in real life and don't really care yeah about and they other. hate each other that and... aspect is what carries over into the very loose remake um from 1998 um uh you've got mail with yes. tom hanks and mm -hmm. meg ryan mm -hmm. so in that one tom hanks is the owner of this like borders type of store Meg Ryan owns a small little independent bookstore and one of the these superstores moves into her neighborhood and threatens her business. And, you know, she he's like a public figure, so she kind of knows who he is already. Yeah. Um, and they meet in person and, you know, she's already got an opinion of him, but at the same time they have met through some I forget exactly how they met online. I don't remember. Probably through like Craigslist kind of thing. And Something. they've been emailing each other back and forth through AOL. Um, which is, you know, why it's, you know, you've got mail. Yeah. Um Yeah, we're that old. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> So that that's really the only kind of tie between those two movies is the basic premise of it that you it's a it's a very strange enemies to lovers story. Yes. And yes. the fact that they don't know that they're enemies. Yeah. That the person that they're kind of falling in love with is in fact their enemy in real And life. how like basically like the saying goes, love conquers all, because I mean basically they realize, oh wow, you're the one I fell in love with in these these words and these letters to each other and yeah. all that other stuff it doesn't matter and because we this just, is who you we are just admitting that your your impression of that person was maybe skewed right right so um it's a really good movie it's funny too um yeah there's a lot of humor in it a lot of humor once uh Jimmy Stewart like realizes that she is the one he's been contacting you know, he's got the inside now and he meets her yeah. as the guy yeah. she works with yeah. and says, oh, so you're meeting somebody here. And she like, like and is he, so mean to him. And he knows that he's supposed, like at that first meeting, he's supposed to wear a carnation uh -huh. so that she knows that it's him. So when he puts the carnation on in the last scene, 
she kind of realizes, finally realizes, you know, he, when he says, I'm the one that you've been riding, puts the carnation on, she realizes that, yeah. that it's true. And, you know, they kind of have their, their first kiss there on Christmas Eve, which is kind of yeah. great. Um, really good ensemble cast, mm -hmm. like everybody in the, in the retail store is great. Uh, learn that the guy who owned the store, the actor is the same actor as the man who played Oz in the Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, my only thing was like, why did it take place in, in Budapest? Budapest. I don't know. The, 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 there's been a few of these movies that they, they, they take place in a foreign country. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of strange. It's weird. I didn't understand what that yeah, was they could about. Have, they could but... have said it in the U.S., but. Yeah, easily. I don't understand, but whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, Teach us some. Yeah. I gave it a 62. <laughs> Jerry gave it a 67. The list score is 64.5. All right. If you have watched this movie and you would like to tell us what you thought, please leave a comment. If you like our channel and what we're providing, please subscribe to our channel. Um, if you'd like to contact us directly, please do so at ratingthelist at gmail.com. But for now, I'm Jerry. And I'm Brad. And we're rating the list. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.